Welcome to Positively Las Vegas. I'm Danny Beckstrom. There are so many things to love about Las Vegas, from its unbeatable sunsets to the neon glow of the Strip. But what really makes this city so special are the people who live here. During the next 30 minutes, you'll see stories from this week dedicated to people in the community doing good things, regular, everyday people making a difference and good things happening to those in need because we all need some help from time to time. Enjoy the very best of Las Vegas. Some Raiders are giving a special surprise to frontline workers at a local Walmart. The pharmacy team is being recognized for outstanding service during the pandemic. This is all part of Walmart's initiative to team up with the NFL players. And reporter Tina Wynn now has more. Well, we're here at the Walmart off of Tropicana in McLeod, where the Las Vegas Raiders are thanking our hometown heroes. For the last two years, our frontline retail health workers have been the real MVP as we've navigated through a tough pandemic. And today, they got a surprise visit from Las Vegas Raiders Hunter Renfro and Foster Moreau. Both players surprised the Walmart pharmacy team with breakfast and spent a couple minutes thanking them for their service. It's been awesome just to see all the associates here today and, you know, all the pharmacists uh, really just to give back and let them know that, you know, Walmart appreciates them, the community appreciates them, but, you know, we appreciate them, me and Foster do personally, um, just the time they spent um, the last couple years and, you know, whether you're for the vaccine or not, you know, that's, but these guys have just been here through it all and been, been very selfless in their, in their um, you know, their sacrifice they've made and so uh, been really cool and um, awesome to meet all of them too. It was such a special morning here. Everyone was filled with so much excitement. The Raiders are certainly making an impact on and off the field. Reporting in East Las Vegas, I'm Tina Wynn. Well, this week, Metro officers are reading to students at Clark County Schools, and this is a story that is positively Las Vegas. And Rachel Moore now joining us live in studio to explain how the event is meant to help police build better relationships with the community. Rachel, good morning. Kalina, good morning. The goal of these scholastic book fairs is to improve reading skills with students, and this program is just one of the initiatives under the Black Giving Circle umbrella, which is a membership group program created by the LVMPD Foundation. Now, it was designed to empower, empower Black owners doing so by mentoring the youth and this is at West Prep Academy off MLK and Lake Mead and what I found interesting was that after the officers read a couple of books to the students they had a question and answer portion now the kids asked things like why do you wear a badge or do you have a gun and then the officers asked the kids what do they think police officers do and most of the answers were they arrest people now officers said that was correct but they want the youth to know that the police serve the community in many ways we're building the trust with them at a young age so it can continue and we can continue to mentor them as they get older and make those life decisions in a good, uh, good light. Oftentimes their relationships are on the negative side, so to have Metro come in, read to our students and have an opportunity to build their own libraries is very, very important. Now each student gets to take home two books from the book fair that continues through the end of the week and this is to help kids build their own library at home. Black Giving Circle is always inviting community and business leaders to become members to support these programs and we do have information on our website on how to do that. Go to KTMV.com. Live in studio, I'm Rachel Moore. Three more arrests here at Legacy High School just adds to the growing pile of violent incidents across the Clark County School District. One parent here says it's completely unacceptable as she worries for her daughter's safety. A fresh round of arrests at Legacy High School has parents feeling frantic, you know, basically. Lana Mathis says she worries for her 10th grade daughter, Jenea, constantly. And the police report of an adult and two juveniles from another high school coming to Legacy in a stolen car with a gun to confront students here hasn't eased her fears. It feels unacceptable. It's like at these hours, my child is in your care. You know, you are responsible for her safety and I don't feel that they're doing their job. The trio was arrested on multiple charges, including one of the juveniles hit with a battery on a police officer charge. All of this coming a day after three students were arrested for attacking or threatening teachers at other schools, which is why Mike Kamer I think it's going to take everyone pitching in is pleading with parents and community leaders to help solve the problem with a new program called Real Ready, a guide for parents to teach kids about law and the consequences of breaking it. What it's not is a list of laws to follow and instructions to obey. Kamer says his program gives adults the tools to connect with kids K through 12 and have a conversation with them about the responsibility they have to follow the law and understand the potential consequences of their actions. Is this something that can lead to me just maybe getting 
getting grounded? Is it a little risky? Or could I actually have an avoidable interaction with law enforcement because of what I'm going to do? Kamer says the resources are free through the Project Real website. Kamer says he knows that his program won't solve all violent incidents across the district, but he says if it stops just one, it will be worth it. In North Las Vegas, I'm Sean Delancey. A restaurant right here in the valley providing big help to those supporting Ukrainian refugees. Evil Pie on East Fremont has raised $10,000 to help feed those fleeing the war with Russia. Now, the money was raised from sales on Ukrainian vodka, and some customers made donations and, in exchange, poured out bottles of Russian vodka. The money raised will go to World Central Kitchen. We'll be back with more of Positively Las Vegas right after the break. Look Welcome back to Positively Las Vegas, our show that highlights the people that make Las Vegas home. For more details on the stories you're watching today, visit ktnv.com slash positively LV. And if you know someone who is helping make Las Vegas and its residents better, reach out to us. You can email positively LV at ktnv.com. We'd love to hear your ideas. Well, teenagers are often the most adoptable foster children you can find just about anywhere. Well, rather than going into all the pros and cons of this, you might want to just watch today's Wednesday's Child instead. So new this morning, Dave Carvancia introduces you to 16-year-old Damien. So is there anything else I should tell people about Damien? What kind of a guy are you? I'm a guy. Trying to talk to teenagers and, well, you know, short answers and insights that are hard to come by. I did find out one of Damien's likes, yeah, though. Yeah. Do you like to play basketball? Yes. You gonna shoot some baskets with me? Sure. Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. A swisher. He's um, just wants to be loved. He wants to be cared for. He wants people to address him and respect him. Like most kids growing up with the challenges of foster care, Damien is working on his relationships. He does well with one-on-one. -on -one, and he needs a lot of direction. He does really well when he has a structured environment. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a family that actually takes Damien under their control and loves him, speaks to him with loving kindness. And Damien too has some thoughts about what it would be like to belong. Would you like to be adopted? Sure. Yeah, can you give me a reason why? Yeah, I want to be adopted. Yeah, I want to go home with my mom. Be nice to have a family. Yeah, I got a family today. What would you do with a family? I play my family, be nice to my family. Once you get to know Damien, he is the most loving, affectionate person. So everything with Damien is a process. Um, that it's totally doable. So he, he's just a wonderful boy. He seems like such a good kid. Dave Carvancia reporting on that story, by the way. And Damien needs parents who will facilitate his love of sports. He is free and clear for adoption right now. So if you'd like to get started on the process to adopt Damien, just call Raise the Future. That number is 702-436-6335. We'll be back with more of Positively Las Vegas right after the break. Welcome back to Positively Las Vegas, our show that highlights the people that make Las Vegas home. For more details on the stories you're watching today, visit ktnv.com slash positively LV. And if you know someone who is helping make Las Vegas and its residents better, reach out to us. You can email positively LV at ktnv.com. We'd love to hear your ideas. The Valley veteran is getting ready to try and break some world records. The yeah. story so inspiring. A lot of records. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in, in this week's Veterans Voice, we're going to introduce you now to the man who wants to let everyone know that if you are struggling, there is hope out there. When Caleb Klein goes for a ride on his recumbent trike, he really goes for a ride. It's worth doing. It's worth overdoing, in my opinion. Right now, he is looking to become a 24-hour world record holder. My goal is to cross 500 miles, and in doing that, that's actually 11 world records. It's an extraordinary goal, and when you see this x-ray of his spine, you realize this is no ordinary man. The Las Vegas native and West Point graduate was injured during a training mission to go to Afghanistan. Just got to a point where I, I quite literally couldn't give my newborn daughter a bath, change diapers. It, it became a quality of life issue. So not only am I dealing with some herniation and degenerations in my lower back. I also have scoliosis, whether that was caused by the incident. 
I, I don't know if that's exactly the case. Klein tried pushing past his back pain. My body just decided that that, that was enough. So I unfortunately was medically discharged September of 2019. At that point, he was introduced to a recumbent trike by the veterans organization Forgotten and Not Gone. Riding the trike is much easier for his back, and it also gave Klein a new start after the Army. For the first time, I finally felt like I had found my freedom and found something that I could actually do for myself that I could actually control. And so at the end of this month in Henderson, he will attempt to set a 500-mile record on a near seven-long loop along Galleria Drive. I will ride that approximately 70 to 75 times over the course of 24 hours. And to be clear, this is a record for all recumbent trike riders, not the disabled. Instead of focusing on disability, which, you know, you, I am 100% total and permanently disabled through the VA, but instead of focusing on the dis part, I like to focus on the ability. The Army taught me how to be loud and proud, and so I want to be a voice for other veterans and just other people that are going through a struggle. Uh, he went through a struggle quite clearly, and he's sort of coming out the other side again. He's going for this record at the end of this month. But Klein says really his big goal, his ultimate goal here, is to be the first person to ever ride across the U.S. in a recumbent trike, uh, something that he is hoping to do in just about uh, three years from now. And I said this before, if anyone can do it, it's definitely him. Yeah, he keeps himself so in, in great shape. He's mm -hmm. very, very mo motivated. Uh, also, by the way, uh, last week uh, we told you about this story, about this, this shadow box here. It belonged to uh, Will Bouchelle. He's a Navy SEAL who passed away in a car crash here in Las Vegas in 2014. Now, fast forward to this past March, another veteran, Fernando Gonzalez, found the shadow box at a swap meet in California. He bought it. The shadow box that had Bouchelle uniform inside. Well, Gonzalez got in contact with the family and that shadow box we're happy to report has finally made it to Bichelle's parents uh, where it belongs there. They live in Florida. They are internally grateful for it. They him. are so, so happy. They left us phone calls, emails saying thank you so much for the story and also the reconnection. So it's really great. We'll be back with more of Positively Las Vegas right after the break. Pro from photography to country music, there are so many things to do in Las Vegas this weekend. Now open inside Bally's Rarely Seen, an exhibition based on the best-selling National Geographic book presented by Imagine Exhibitions. Get up close and take in some of the most magnificent sights in the world. These 50 striking images were shot by some of the world's most talented photographers. You will be drawn in. And concerts on the beach are back over at Mandalay Bay. This Saturday night, country music star Walker Hayes steps onto stage to get a little fancy like. The Alabama native is sure to get the crowd all riled up with his latest hits. And hold on to your hats. Drag brunch just got a makeover and it's fabulous. Edie hosts the show and the girls are everything. They sing their way through a decadent brunch by chef Dominic DePata. Showtime is 1 p.m. inside the chandelier room at Notoriety. For even more fun things to do, just head to our website and look for 13 Things. Welcome back to Positively Las Vegas, our show that highlights the people that make Las Vegas home. For more details on the stories you're watching today, visit ktnv.com slash positively LV. And if you know someone who is helping make Las Vegas and its residents better, reach out to us. You can email positively LV at ktnv.com. We'd love to hear your ideas. Esports is growing in Nevada. Hugh Lay is on a quest. Not this Nintendo Smash Brothers quest, but an actual quest. To get students and literally anyone an opportunity to build a career into a new field of technology and a new field for video games. In 2018, Las Vegas hosted the World Championship of Rocket League, Hugh's favorite game. I just loved it so much that I did an after party. Which led him to organizing a Smash Brothers tournament in town, which led him to creating the Nevada Esports and Education League. We're able to fund students with better technology, we're able to help teach them new computer skills. The Nevada Esports and Education League was created at the beginning of the pandemic when social isolation, virtual learning, and the physical and mental effects of the pandemic were significantly impacting young people. 